Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey everybody, it is now time to answer some of your questions, tech tips, about RVs. From me. Uh, let's see what I got here. <clears throat> All right, so first one here. From Earl Ballantyne, with a B, not a V, but B as in boy. Earl Ballantyne. Hey, great video, Todd. Got me. Of course, you say great video. I'm going to go ahead and read your question here. Hey, great video, Todd. Uh, how much power is the controller providing to the batteries? And I was talking about a solar controller. How much power is the solar controller providing to the batteries? Would it be better and faster to have a standalone battery charger connected to the batteries for faster charge? Okay, and just want to make sure, can I put multiple batteries together in my RV? I'm assuming he's talking about a solar controller, okay? Well, the problem is in application, right? So solar, as long as you got sufficient sun strike, depending on how many panels you have, um, go through a solar controller. Now, here's what the controller does. Now, solar panels do provide a DC signal, but it's well above whatever the voltage is of your batteries. Well, that would be dangerous. We never want to charge batteries with too high of a voltage. That's where the solar controller comes in. It takes the high voltage that solar panels produce, still DC, lowers it down to battery voltage, increases the amperage by lowering the voltage, that's just Watt's Law for you, and provides flow uh, to charge the batteries. How much, you ask? Well, so solar controllers come in all different varieties. Now, most of those are going to be uh, 12 volt, 24 volt, some are even 48 volt. So the voltage will stay the same. Batteries, okay? When you ask how much power um, uh, does the solar controller provide to the batteries? Well, it all depends, right? Because it also depends on how many solar panels you have. So just point in case you get something from the OEM, they may put a 300 watt solar panel up there. Guess what you're gonna get in your batteries? Less than 300 watts. That is it, okay? If you wanna look at it from amperage, take 300, divide it by 12 or 14, depending on what type of battery you have, and that will be the expected amp flow. Now, does that mean you're gonna get that as soon as the sun comes up, sun goes down? Oh, absolutely not. On average, the solar panel here in America, North America, on top of a RV, roughly six hours of sun strike. Meaningful sun strike. Now here's the thing. In order for there to be flow, the voltage being produced by that solar controller must exceed the voltage of the battery. I have to overcome what we call internal resistance. How much? It all depends on how much you have on the roof, okay? It all depends on how big the solar controller is. You can get a solar controller that may only produce up to 30 amps, up to 40 amps, up to 50 amps, but you have to have enough solar panels up there. So it's it's kind of a combination. So the reason why I said application, because solar panels can charge while you're going down the road during the day. Solar panels can charge when you're not plugged into shore power, okay? Now, granted, when you're plugged into shore power, your converter or your charger, if you have, a say, an inverter charger, is going to charge way faster or it's going to add to it. But the great thing about batteries is, is you can also have two charges at once. So why not say, hey, if I'm plugged into shore power, I can charge from my converter and I can charge through my solar controller with the solar panels up top, right? Now, you have to keep it, keep it within the limits of whatever the battery can actually handle, but yes. Um, so it's a difficult question um, because of course you could put enough on there. I mean, most of the time when we do a solar install, uh, through uh, the National RV Training Academy, through Big Good Batteries. I'm going to put as many solar panels as I can on the roof to try and provide that portable power uh, for you. Going down the road, staying off grid, just any time during the day, it's going to sit there and provide a charge to the batteries. If the batteries are completely full, no flow. So it works out great. But I'll put anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 watts up there. Now, granted, your solar, uh, your typical uh charger, battery charger may produce, just depending on, you know, what size you have, 
anywhere from 50 amps to 60 amps, okay? Solar panels, I get the voltage right, get it everything down, I can produce up to 100 amps. So it's a difficult question. If you're talking about the one from the OEM, it's always in addition to, and you're absolutely right, if there is a charge source, plugging into shore power will always be preferred, okay? So just a little tip on that. I've actually got other tips out there on how solar actually works. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, once you come into class, I can go over this in way more detail over the National RV Training Academy. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. Are we on? Let's see here. Good, 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 good. Bam.